God bless, God bless. Hey, this is Paula Brion, the Diva for Christ. Yes, and you know what happens every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, we bring you the testimony. That's what, that's what this is. Thanks be to God. And you know, before we do anything, we go to the throne of God. And today will be no different. Father God, in your name, just have your way, Lord, with this show as you do every Tuesday. Father God, we ask that you would just bless the listeners on today, that they would truly be blessed by the guests that I'm bringing on this day, your day, Father God. We ask that you just make the way clear, Lord, so that this interview can bless someone. Someone is in need of this interview on today, and we are looking for you to show up and show out, Lord, just for your people as you do every time. Father God, we ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. 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 We always bring you an uplifting and spirit-filled show. And you know what? We ain't going to do it different on today. Tonight, we have... What a wonderful, wonderful woman of God. Whoa, she's a mother. She's a film producer. She's a screenplay writer, a mentor. She is a model. Oh, my gosh, an actress and an author. Like, there is nothing that this wonderful woman does not do. And especially, she is truly a woman of God. Jacinth Hillam, and we are bringing her right now on to the airway. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey, how are you? <laughs> God bless you. How are you on today, this wonderful Tuesday? And I just want to bless God just for you being here, for the listeners. Oh, I tell you, we just bring some encouraging word for them every Tuesday at 9 p.m., and I'm just so blessed that we're bringing them and you on today. You just do it all. You, I mean, what don't you do? <laughs> but you know what? We want to know more about you. Who are you? Like, what? What? Where? Where did it begin for you, Jacinth? Oh man! Now, when you said where did it begin, it is so broad. So, what are you referring to with it? So I'm not rambling. Well, well no. From the beginning, you know, um, you do so many things, um, and and like. Like with me as a singer, you know, it started in, you know, in this or that. You know, like where did, where did it come? Like how did your acting career start? Like what, what actually started you on your journey and this beautiful journey that you have? Yeah, so I actually started out with modeling, and I knew that um, I started when I was about 17, and I knew that mm -hmm. modeling is the top. I feel like, you know, if you, if you haven't started to be a, a name for yourself, well, back then that's the mindset that we had by mid-20s, right. your modeling career is pretty much done. And I knew that acting is something I've always wanted to get into because you can be, I mean, look, look at Morgan Freeman, look at Oprah Winfrey, look at Viola right. Davis. You have great legendary actors and actresses who paved the way and are still acting and, and you know, whether you're 80, 60, 70, you still have a role. So I've always wanted to branch right. off into that how and the opportunity came about when I was in church and they wanted to do like Christmas production and Easter, mm. you know, uh, Resurrection Sunday production. And that's where I feel like that's where when it became more real, like to see it come to fruition and to see the impact that art imitating real life acting have on people and to see it displayed um, and through our characters and how moving and how we can evoke emotions and change life sets and mindset. Acting is so much mm. more what, you know, is so underestimated um, in terms of right. the power and the, that it can, that it has on people. So that's where it started for me um, in church. And then I'm like, okay, I want to make this a profession. I want to take it all away. And I started to take classes and read about the headshots and how your headshots should look and, start doing right, little right. jobs here and there, whether it's student films or indie films or short films and build a demo reel and then go from there. And it's just all about networking and getting the right agent to put you out there. And that's where it all started. Well, I know you, you're definitely from Jamaica, St. Mary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tell me, tell me a little bit about, 
time there, you know, because that's a big transition because I know eventually you got came to Brooklyn. Um, uh, how young were you, and, and uh, what do you, what, what that journey, what did that journey mean to you? Oh, man, yeah, and like you said, I'm from Jamaica, St. Mary, Richmond, um, and I came about in my early teens. I came to the U.S. Um, Brooklyn, New York, East New York, Brownsville. Yeah, Brooklyn, <laughs> Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> Jamaica will always be home. It's just something about the energy, the vibes, the atmosphere. You just know when you're in Jamaica. I just know when I'm home. It's a place of, like, rejuvenation, rebirth, just refreshing. Um, and I was raised by my grandmother while my mom and my dad was here in the States, you know, trying to get their green card, trying to get their citizenship to, to help me to come here. Um, but, yeah, I came here, and like everyone else, I just hit the pavement running, I guess, quote, unquote, trying to get that American dream. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. Going from here and there. And just I, I know that's a that, that's a, a a very, you know, inspirational um, moment and, and a pivotal moment, you know, because that, that was a huge. That's why I asked you about the transition because, you know, it's, it's such a, uh, a difference when it comes down to being raised in a place like Jamaica and then coming to the Brooklyn, Brooklyn, you know, when you, I just know that that transition had to be kind of tough. Um, but, again, you're, you're speaking in terms of being grounded um, spiritually. So I know that had a lot to do with it. Yeah, it was a huge culture shock for sure because, you know, I didn't know how to speak proper English. Of course, we're, you know, we're under the British, so our spelling is, can be a little bit off, you know, mm-hmm. um, a little bit off from here. My accent was very, very strong, um, right. you know, so I'm, you know, afraid of being picked on and, bullying and things like that and insecurity and just, I mean, it's not like I came from, I think if I had came from Jamaica to Pennsylvania, it would be a little bit more better transition, but to the Big Apple, New York City. <laughs> like, yeah, like you say, beating the pavement, <laughs> beating the pavement. That's, that's, I'll tell you. It was like to New York, it was, that's, that's a huge culture shock because it's like night and day. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, people don't understand, and that's why I just really uh, filtered in on that and, and pointed that out because people don't realize that, you know, um, it's, it's a major transitioning, um, making moves like that and having that kind of drive. I'm, I'm sure a, a lot of island people that I speak to, they're very, they were timid, you know, coming in, you know, um, and, and, you know, this, you know, New York, it, it kind of introduces you to it quickly, <laughs> should I say. So, you know, that's why I asked about that because I know it's, it's, it's rough. It's rough coming from one, you know, place to another and, and making that move. But praise God, this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, woman who has grown out from the, oh, man, I tell you, from them Brooklyn streets. And I'm still in Brooklyn, so I know, I know what, you, what, you, what you're about. Um, I love you because you just, you are so multi-talented. And, and um, I mean, for you, you know, you started with the modeling, and I, I guess you might have been one of them ba- Barbizon. What it was the Barbizon back in them days? Everybody was a Barbizon model. Did you start with Barbizon? What was your first uh, modeling uh, company that you landed with? I started with and They taught me how to walk, apply my makeup and all of that, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, I tell you, it's a walk. It's definitely a walk. It's a walk. Um, but, you know, and I love seeing you because you're on QVC. <laughs> you you be making your appearances. And I'm like, I know her. <laughs> I know her. God is just so good. I'm telling you, he's moving you in such a mighty, mighty way. And the, the things that I just listed about you, and I just spoke so much of you, um, you just do a little bit of everything. You, you're a screenplay writer. You know, um, that's a heavy order. You're you're a producer, a film producer, um, at at this point in your junction in your life. My gosh, um, you know that those are heavy orders. Like, what? How did the transition from um going from modeling end up you doing those kind of uh, those are, those are some tall orders? How did you get transition from that to that? Well, I mean, film producing is when I was doing the film Diary of a Bad Man back in 20, 
2015, I believe. Um, 2015, that was actually my first leading, you know, my first role um, through Dem- Demaraye Deneran. Thank, thank, grateful for him that gave me the role mm-hmm. of Detective William, where I was able to use my accent and went undercover as a Jamaican. Um, so with with that film, when I started to help him out and see what what goes into, you know, go you know the transition from a film from script to screen and the post production, and then now you know I got more hands on with getting it into festival, getting it in Jamaica, um, and the theater run down there, and, and Cayman Island and the Caribbean, um, and then you know we ended up having a premiere in London and sold out London and sold out Canada and won the film festival in Canada where I won best um, Caribbean tale film festival, best actress and best film. Um, so I, I started to see that and I'm like, man, I want to create my own content. It's so powerful when you can just birth your own mm-hmm. baby out, tell your story right. in such creative ways instead of waiting for someone to hand you a role make the role. That's why I'm so grateful right. for Tyler Perry and the way he paved the, the way for not just him, but so many other talents under him who have shared yeah. the same story, yeah. you know, who yeah. stop waiting for someone to give you a table or a seat at their table and, and, and invite you over to eat dinner. Create your own table. Create your own recipe. Your own, create your own lane. And I'm just so right. proud of that man like one of my biggest inspiration. I'm not saying that because, you know, everybody's trying to jump on the Tyler Perry bandwagon, but, I mean, this man went from literally nothing to owning his own studio, larger than Walt Disney Studio, and, you know, yes. on a, yes. like, confederate. Yes. Land. yes. So it's like, the story is crazy. He and changed now, history. He changed <laughs> history. He really did. That's right. So from, That's right. I feel like. I'm doing it. I'm trying to pave the way, like Tyler Perry paved the way for others. I'm trying to pave the way for more of my Caribbean people because when I turn on the TV, I don't see me. I don't see Caribbean content. I don't see a, a authentic Caribbean actress who is out here playing a leading role. No, we don't want to play the right. maid all the time. Stop giving a right. Rasta man uh, an American actor to play a Rasta man with a fake behind accent. I hate exactly. it with passion. And it's like you really couldn't hire an authentic Jamaican actor. You had to literally yes. give Aki, uh, the Jamaican role, like seriously. And no, 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 no offense to Tay Diggs. I think he did an amazing job as to how Stella got her groove back. But to teach Tay Diggs how to speak Pacho when there's so many handsome, chocolate, fine, right? You know, right? Say it, girl. You know, Say it. Black- <laughs> it's true. It really is. It's like, a good job, but I just feel like it could have been a little bit better with a more authentic, a Jamaican authentic actor. So for me, I feel like that's my niche is to create more Caribbean content. So that's what I want to do is pave the way um, just like that for my people. Well, that's you know, and that and that's, that's commendable. I don't mean to cut you, but it really is commendable that you think like that because a lot of people, they get uh, they come from, you know, their community. And, and I speak on that with this show all the time. Community is important. And what you give back is even more important. And it's mm-hmm. a blessing to see that you have not forgotten your people. You have not forgotten your community. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, that means that speaks volumes. You know what I'm saying? And there should be more people like that you know, um, that really are going to stand up for their people. Um, And that's why, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, a lot of people, you know, come against it. You know, and I'm not saying that all lives don't matter, but at one point you have to be stand up for your right as who you are. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not all people. I am a black woman. So, you know, to stand up and say, my life matters, my black people matter, I don't think that that's a problem. I just think a lot of people are taking stuff out of content. And for you to stand as a Jamaican woman and and say, this is me, this is how it should be, is nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. You know, um, we have a clip uh, from one of your um, uh, snippets of of, of a scene from a show. Uh, Can you please set it up for us? So this clip is actually a snippet from a new series that I just finished, and that's out right now on Urban Fit TV called Bubbly Brown Sugar, written by Tamala Baldwin. And um, so it's 
she's just an amazing individual, super, super, super talented. Um, and, yeah, I played a role of Angela. And I can't tell you too much, but Angela is just a hot mess. And she's going around breaking hearts, <laughs> y'all. Breaking hearts. Uh-oh. And, and all her bad decisions and, you know, the way she went about doing things is starting to backbite and it's starting to come back to haunt her. And it's now her worst nightmare um, that's causing her to fall apart. So, yeah. Mm. Bubbly. Okay. So, yeah, sit back and relax. We're going we gonna to go into that a little bit and have you listen to it. No, and I, I killed our baby. What do you mean killed our baby? You had a miscarriage because of the accident. It wasn't anyone's fault. I never, I never blamed you. I told you that. You were a good man, Caleb. You were so good to me, Caleb. Sorry, I killed the baby. Why do you keep saying that? We lost the baby. The doctor said that there was nothing that we could have done. Either. We didn't lose the baby because of an accident. Baby, it wasn't an accident. I, I was... I, uh, I was... I was... I was... I was Yes, that was amazing. Amazing, amazing work that you do. I'll tell you, and it was powerful. It was intense. You know what I'm saying? Where did you have to go, like, in, within you? Um, because when I see you, I think of you as just this, you know, kind of shy type of timid. Like, where did you have to go to get this, this, this role? Like, where within yourself did you have to go? For this role, it was definitely an emotional recall um, technique of just going back to a, a moment that where it felt familiar, you know, of losing everything or, and I know that feeling very, very well. So I, I usually will pull from those places of a moment where you feel like your life is on the edge and you pretty mm-hmm. much lose yourself and losing everything and you don't know yes. which direction to go. You have no fight left. And yes. Yeah, this is where she was at, and I, I've been there, so I was able to tap into those emotions. And um, no, I don't know it doesn't linger because some people be like, "How do you tap back out of it?" I just feel like you just have to know yourself as an artist, and with with ex- when over time you'll know what works for you, what don't work for you. If you know you're the type where you, oh man, I want to make myself cry so bad, and you go back and you think back to a place where it's the saddest day of your life, or um, and you can't snap back out of that, and you're going home depressed, then you should not do that technique. <laughs> yeah, you know, so yeah. Snap back out of it and just get the ball rolling and just on to the next scene and let's go. If this if scene requires me to be happy and jolly, then I'm happy and jolly. I'm not stuck in the last scene or stuck in those emotions right. that I've visited. Yeah, that, that, like I said, that that was a powerful scene, and um, you know, I, again, when I see you, I just see you know, you just always, hey, how you doing? You just got this sweet <laughs> atmosphere, but you know, we we all can go there, you know, we all. Can, but I just figured, you know, and it's nice to know that you know, sometimes you got to go back into the archives of. Our- yes. Um. So yeah, you, you know it's it's a it's amazing um just the many many talents that you have um at, at being an actress, but you're not you're you're also an author. Wow, like tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> wow, the spectrum is amazing. Thank you. Uh, my book, my baby, my purpose, love after. Um, which was released February, so a year ago, February 2019. Mm. Um, right. So that was my first book. I had no intentions in becoming an author. I had no intentions on writing a book. I can't even. I didn't even know it was in me to sit still to save my life because I'm always on the go. <laughs> I'm moving. I'm a mover and a shaker. I'm the type that will most likely delegate than sit there and do something. Um, but... <laughs> To sit still and do this thing was God knew what he was doing when he was doing it because, you know, I, my plans were totally different. If he had told me, our daughter, I, you was going to be an author and I was going to have you be a writer, I'd be like, nope, give it to someone else. 
I didn't really know it was I didn't like it. I'm just going to be 100% honest. Am I the type to, that I loved uh, growing up, always loved reading books? No. I'm the type that I would read the summary and be like, I read it, teacher. You know, so <laughs> I've always wanted to try to find shortcuts. <laughs> so to sit still and to, to read and to, to write and just sit, be still and download was very, very hard, but it was very therapeutic because in writing Love After, is where my healing takes, you know, taking place. Mm. So love out yes. for me. Then once it ministered to me and I went through the, the work and healing and everything in my book, I literally had to go through. Um, and after each chapter is a journal, a journal as well where it asks you questions and you have to answer stuff and it gives you time to reflect and, you know, reevaluate some things and just, you know, just to put your, put yourself in that perspective and to make, intentional choices and to, to make better choices and how can you evolve and grow to becoming the best version of yourself. Um, so, yeah, love after touch on a lot of things. Like we always ask the question, why me? Why not? Mm -hmm. You know, often in that right. in our life, we are so mad at God. We are mad at ourselves for allowing ourselves to go through the things that we went through and mad at our offenders. So, you know, mm -hmm. I have a chapter in there, why not me? Then I have, it was necessary. It had to happen. Mm. So things yes. that we go through, um, where you say your tears become your testimony, your pain become your purpose, your trials become mm. your, your testimony, your mess become your message. It had to yes. happen. So when you failure and you change your perception of failure, um, you didn't fail. The situation you were part of failed. Uh, when you change your, your lens and how you view pain and your failures and your trials, then life just starts to, to be on the up and up. Life just looks totally different when you look at those hiccups from a different lens. Instead of playing the victim, sitting in that thing and woe is me, you, God says all things work together for your good. That's the good, the bad, and the ugly. So you yes. have to find the lesson in everything that you do. And, and fail yes. forward. You know, don't fail backwards and keep living in the past. Your future didn't do anything wrong to you for it, for it to be paying the crime, the, doing the time for the crime of your past. That's in my new book, but you can take that for now. <laughs> <laughs> and it was first here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Forward. But, your future yeah. did not do anything wrong to sit here and pay the, the time and for the crime of your past. You know, so, you right, know, fail right. forward to what you do to, to keep going, to keep persevering, to keep pushing forward. What did you need to learn? Because oftentimes the reason why we keep on repeating the same cycle over and over or a good one, we date the same people but with different faces over and over, the common denominator mm -hmm. is you, something in you that keep on attracting these things. It's a place of familiarity, um, you know, right. so – yeah, so, you know, oftentimes you didn't learn your lesson. So God is like, okay, let's, let's, then you got to repeat it again so you can learn next time. Yeah. So, yeah. And, that, and that's so true because, you know, you, you oftentimes, you know, you do, you, you end up doing the same thing over and over again. And it is a learning. It is a learning. And, and, and once you don't, if you don't get it, you, you really have to go through it again just to get it right. And once you get it right, you know, you could tell that you're moving on to another level. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and I definitely, you know, uh, can attest to that. You know, I was a single mother, you know, um, raising my children alone. Um, and it's been a lot of rough times, you know, so I could identify with a lot of what you had going on. Trust me. You know what I'm saying? Um, and yeah. and it, it spoke volumes. It spoke volumes. And a lot of the, the things that you had to go through you know what I'm saying, um, to, to just to make it, you know, uh, was, was, was a lot, was enough, was enough for me, you know, um, so, you know, it, but it is, it is easy to slip back into that, you know, to that, uh, uh, I'd say comfort zone. I, I, I'd say that's what it is. You know, sometimes we're just comforted on where, what we are knowledgeable of and scared to push past and go beyond that. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people are scared of, of fame, fortune, you know, success, believe it, you know, um, because you don't know what's there and you, you're you not sure what, what you're going to meet once you get there. So a lot of people, you know, they, they run from it, not knowing, you know what I'm saying? 
Um, but sometimes you just got to step out of that comfort zone so that God can do what he needs to do uh, for you in your life, um, which, which definitely brings me down to what this show is all about, the test. Um, tests that take you to your testimony. What is a test that you've been through? Um, it doesn't have to be specific, but what, something that you feel that has led you to your testimony, your your godly walk. Absolutely. I, um, I think that my divorce was definitely a big test because mainly because my kids were young and they were involved. So to to have my children, not more so me, but my children, to have my children grow, go through that because oftentimes we, we get so caught up in the, how the divorce or a bad breakup affects us, the individual, but when children are involved, it hits totally different because you don't know what that's doing to their psyche. Now your yes. household is divided, it's unbalanced. Yes. Now we're a, the mommy and daddy being in the same household, now they're seeing a single mom and a single dad and, like, it's a total shock to them. So what happened mm-hmm. to those children, for me, yeah. that was one of the hardest blows that I've ever had to deal with. And when you go through a divorce, I lost pretty much everything and had to start over from scratch. But in that pain and through those tears is where I found my testimony, and those pain was where I found my purpose. And that's where love mm-hmm. afterwards birthed. Because I remember mm-hmm. one day, I was at my mother's house because I told her, you know, I was like, Ma, can I just stay with you, you know, temporarily till I got get back on my feet? And I stayed with her for about a year. I didn't have to. Um, I could have stayed in my home. But for me, I just needed a fresh start. I just needed to get away from everything. I just needed to get my mind right and find my peace. Right. Right. But I remember one day I was in my mother's shower, and I was just crying, crying, crying. And it's kind of it's, it's like I heard the voice of, of the Lord saying, daughter, there's love after these deaths. And I didn't understand what that meant. And it just kept Mm. that word kept hitting me, love after, love after. And I wrote it down. And I remember I started to journal because someone had told me, Ja, you know, start journaling. And I hate journaling. (laughs) I just didn't like it. I'm a person I just like, I just like to think things through. But it's something so therapeutic about writing stuff stuff down. And I didn't know. Yes, it is. Yes, so that it is. Yes. Just writing and journaling and, 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 and just looking back at things and what God has brought me through and what I need to get through and what I need to heal from. And love after, um, you know, I just kept on hearing, Ja, you need to write a book. You need People need to hear your story. And I'm like, me? Oh, hey, no. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to <laughs> Write a book. First of all, I don't even feel like my story is that important. I wasn't strung out on drugs. No, I'm not a recovering alcoholic. I wasn't a prostitute. Because I just felt like in order to tell my story or to be empowering, it had to be like true, crazy, crazy dramatic. And like I just didn't feel like God can use me. I'm like, everybody go through a divorce. Everybody go through a breakup. Mm-hmm, I'm like, mm-hmm. dude, what's new? Um, but God had other plans, like, you know, it yeah. love after and coming a ministry for me, not even knowing that this book and just writing a, a motivational memoir and telling my story and love after wasn't just an about, about a divorce. Love after was about healing from all of the death, dying to self. Love after is mm. coming you, discovering yourself, discovering your purpose, you know, evolving. Yes. You know, so yes. there are so many things that I had to heal from that outside of just my divorce. My divorce was pretty much what led to me wanting to peel back the onion and uncover just since and why am I going through certain things and why have I gone through certain things and, and, right. and just right. discovering there were so many things in life that I that lie dormant that I – um, that became normal for me that, you know, sometimes we go through bad things and we normalize it and we slap an excuse on it or yep. we just speak to it because we just don't know how to deal with it or we just, it's easier to ignore it or to, you know, throw it yes. in a back burn. But it will come a point in life where you must deal with things in order to go and right. push That man in the mirror. That man in the mirror, I tell you, that man in the mirror, You some, at some point you have to look at yourself and ask yeah. yourself why. What what mm-hmm. made this happen and how can I recover from it? You know, right. but, but bless God, 
bless God for God, you know, um, having that, that, that being to lean on, you know what I'm saying? Uh, to help you when, when, when you're at your lowest, been there. I've, I've been done times where you're crying and crying out and, you know, why me, Lord? I, I truly been there, sis. I understand, you know, but mm-hmm. God has a bigger plan, you know, and, but you have to find your, yourself in that place where you can be recovered. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, recovery is everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I found that in your book. You know, there was such a recovery, you know, and, of course, it's showing itself. It's showing out in, and playing out in everything that you're doing. Like, you're just going from, you know, point A to point B, things like you said that you didn't even know. God just continued to birth in you and, and, and just give life to it. And, um, you know, thank God for you, you know, um, and, and I'm so glad that you, you continue to walk in, the, in your ministry. You've got so many wonderful things coming out of this. What, what type of, uh, businesses or anything that's coming, that that's coming future stuff that you have, that you haven't even touched on, um, uh, that you're looking at at this point, Jacinta? Absolutely. Well, I'm I'm currently working on my second book, um, which is, you know, Love After Transformation, trying to come out with, like, you know, I would love to do a, a pilot for a talk show for Love After Transformation, um, the book, and also, um, you know, I'm thinking I might as well just do podcasts and try to get on this thing since that's the new wave. <laughs> the new wave. Yes. Yes, um, it's a wonderful, I'm, wonderful platform. <laughs> so, and I was just procrastinating and just was just like, it's too, everybody's doing it. I don't want to do it. And God was just like, no, it's a platform where you can let my light shine through you. So do it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I'm also working on a new TV series that I'm going to be producing. Um, and All right. So that's going to be going into production um, spring of 2021, and mm-hmm. yeah, so um, definitely want to have more love after conferences internationally. So I had my first love after conference here in in, in Lehigh Valley, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, at Arts Quest in March, um, Women's mm. Month, and I want to have another one next year. And but I also want to have love after conference in Nigeria. I believe that's in August. So that's the date that okay. we're looking at. I want to do a love after Jamaica. Love after because when when last year when I wrote the book and God was just taking me to so many different places where I didn't even know how I ended up in in Nigeria but it just kind of fell in my lap and then me Thank traveling God. to all the different places Jamaica and I just saw that God was just pl- having me plant seeds in these different places and to mm. to go mm. across different continents with my book I'm like. That's not the norm. Some people just drop their book on Amazon and keep it pushing. But the That's way it. that was, it was just different. And to, yes. to have the hands-on influence, not just doing, okay, uh, I have a presence online in, in Africa, but to be hands-on with those kids and, and women who, you know, tell me that they appreciate my story and I motivate them or I inspire them or to speak to kids and go to colleges yes. and do a tour. Yes. That was what God's orchestrated plan. That was nothing but divine intervention because if you had asked me would I be doing that, I would have never guessed it <laughs> in a million. It wasn't even on my vision. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It, it really is. It's amazing how God would just take platforms and place them in front of you and say, you know, just do this. You know, and I'm, I'm telling you, like, you, you, I'm looking at your, your resume, man, and your bio. It's like, my goodness. You know, you, you have been through every kind of spectrum, uh, even mentoring, mentoring young, the youth. And, and I'm really big on that. You know, you, have, you can't forget about the youth. They are our future. You know, and you really have taken this bull by the horn. T- tell me a little bit about your, your mis- ministry, your mission. I mean, what, what Love After is, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's, it represents a re- restoration. It, re- rep- it represents dying to self and discovering your purpose and pretty much how to transition from pain to purpose. 
So whatever those painful things, like you were saying, your tears into your testimony, whatever those things that kept you up at night, that you cried sleepless nights over, your purpose mm-hmm. lies in There's a reason why you're going through what you're going through. There's some people that's tied yes, to your yes. People that's waiting on you to get in alignment and surrender to your yes mm-hmm. and your purpose. There are people that's yes. waiting on your, t- you know, to become unstuck. There's certain people that's tied to you. So I didn't know by me saying yes to this book or yes to love after and, and, and having this be a new ministry for me in an unorthodox way, um, very unorthodox. I'm not a minister. <laughs> but I do feel like <laughs> platform to motivate the masses um, and the people who don't know God. It's so easy to go into church and preach to people or pre- preach to people who already know God. What about right. the people who don't know God? What that about the people know. in the yes. church? Yes. Go ahead. You preach it now, girl. You preach it now. <laughs> you preach You preach it. And there's truth to that. A lot of celebrities. You got to hit them where they at. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, for me, I need to go to the people who don't know God, the people who can, you know, who don't know or have a relationship with God or who have never placed a foot in church. Um, I want to be able to reach those people, you know, who can look at me like I'm relatable. Oh, man, I'm, right. she's one of right. I can relate to her. She's not, uh, you right. know, she don't swear she, that she's holier than thou. She, like, right. I just want to be more relatable to those people. Um, right, but well, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. That that is so uh, so true, you know, um, and 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 so appreciated. Honestly, you know, um, you raise up a standard. Um, you're a positive role model. Um, and that that brings us to the next clip. Um, and you, if you could just set up that clip, uh, uh, for the listeners so that they can be understanding on what this clip is about. Absolutely. So um, this clip right here is a commercial that my daughter and I did for Aura Gel. Um, and it was her first gig. And for her first gig, she did an amazing job. Woo! And, yes, she did. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Mommy mode. I'm trying to be mommy, but also uh, her play mom at the same time. And I'm trying to do it. was definitely hard just to like, Jen, sit down. Be quiet. Look, pay attention. <laughs> All right, honey. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just, yeah, she did an amazing job. Mm-hmm. But this is a, a commercial we did for Orange Joe. Okay. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> All right, now pick your favorite toothpaste. <laughs> so one step at a time. There were sugar bugs. Where are those sugar bugs? How do you get rid of the sugar bug? Brush? Is it in the back? Is that a sugar bug? Get that sugar bug. Get the sugar bug. Take that sugar bug. Yes, and that was wonderful. I, I loved that clip because it was just so beautiful. I mean, you know, just to see mommy daughter time, you know, I mean, you know, that's a that's a that's a special time right there. You know, um, it wasn't even about the the teeth thing and the brushing the teeth. It was just that moment of bonding, and it shined through during that commercial. It really did, and I it really caught me. I was just like, oh my god, that's so gorgeous, so beautiful, and it and it meant so much you know what I'm saying as a mother I have two girls so it's like you know that just touched home for me you know what I'm saying so I, I really so so appreciate that that was that was beautiful beautiful thank you um thank you. Let, let me if, if I was to ask you because a lot of everything that you've spoken about things that we've seen lend to the situation at hand on uh, what we're dealing with um what what would be the one thing that you would leave with the listeners on today in regards to the storm that we're in storm right that now. We're in right now. Um, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm this time, this time to get into to you, get into you, to get to that to place of self, that place of not fully surrender. Fully um, what, um, them, what them is, is, um, you know, um, you know, I, 
I was so busy, I was so busy. And with the pandemic, and with the it pandemic, it shut me down and down to be still, and, still and to give me the time and to really time. focus, to regroup, to recenter, to reset. Like really, really just using this time to reset, to get back in alignment to things that you probably blew over or things that you probably that went over your head or, you know, things that you procrastinated in on. This is the time right. to really press that reset button and to really mm. get back in alignment and to get in a place of being fully sur- fully surrendering in your spirit, in your heart, in your mind, body, soul, all of that. God, yes. what is it that you to do? Because this season has been the season of literally purging, figuratively and literally. Yes. Like really purging mentally, my spirit, um, my, you know, my mind, emotionally, like on spiritually on all levels, just purging, purging from things that, you know, kept me dormant, purging from things that kept shackles on me or bondages on my mind or my heart and like anything that was preventing me from growing, I literally mm. just purged to cut the ties. Um, mm. So I would say if I had to give you an advice, take this season to purge anything mm. that happened for 2021, this year, yeah. last year, year before, yeah. five years before, ten years, take this time to purge. Whether you need to yeah. cut certain relationships, cut certain ties off, and learn yeah. to say no. This season, I had to learn how to say no because that was hard for me because I'm just such mm. a nice person at the time, and I, I always try to <laughs> kill one stone, and I, oh, I'm the type of person where there's a will, there's a way. Let's figure it out. Let's do it. Let's do it. And I'm learning to say no. Why? Yeah. I don't have to have a reason. Just no, just no. I'm not led to it. No. You know, so yep. Yep. just and just taking this time to press the reset button, get back in alignment and prepare yourself. And that that's the word that God gave me this this in this season is prepare, preparation. Because twenty twenty one is gonna be here before you know it. And I would hate for you guys, whoever is listening, who is going through, you know, not take this time in this pandemic to really recenter and reset and really fully surrender. Like this time is a time that we may never get back. Like yes. this time is history, one for the books. This time is like this is yes. going to be in the history. 2021 pandemic. That's right. We, people go from 20, 30, 40 years from now going to be talking about this. So take yes. this time to get in alignment with God's will for your life. Everything that I wanted to do, I literally threw it out. And I'm like, God, what do you want me to do? Because sometimes you busy mm. just being busy. But if this pandemic didn't sit you down and have you thinking twice about your life, then it ain't hit you hard enough yet. <laughs> like, That's right. That's right. Like, That's right. This, Definitely like, has been. I went through my phone, purged everything, went through, like, just my home, just a cleansing just got me a prayer room, a prayer yes. area, if you to a little rug over there by the window and get you a pillow yes, and, yes. Stuff and make that be your altar. I just had to be very intentional about seeking God and seeking, yes. you know, he says those that thirst and, and uh, you know, thirst after righteousness shall be filled. And God wants yes. to know that, you know, you're not just reading your Bible and praying and that's it. That's not how you're filled, and that's not how you grow solely. But most importantly, God wants to know that you're seeking him. You're intentional about yes. building a relationship with him. It's easy yes. to get caught in religiousness, the religiosity, and you're, you're reading your word daily and religiously, and you're praying religiously like you bless your food religiously. But are you seeking God? Are you thirsty? Yes. Are you craving? Yes. He wants to yes. know that you have genuine, authentic desire for him, not because you want something and you see him as Santa Claus, right. but because you right. him and you fear living without him. I'm to the point where I fear being out of alignment because I know what it felt like to be stubborn. I know what it feels like to be just yes. off I know what it felt like to be out of alignment, doing my own thing, and just a yes. ship without a sail in everywhere, just all the way in yes. lukewarm, great areas, don't know whether I'm going or coming, you're just existing yes. and going down. But now I'm, I'm afraid not to be God. We, is it your will for me to go right? No? Okay, I'm standing still then. No, well, I don't want that whooping. 
uh uh-uh. You know, so I think for me that's just that's where I'm at. That would be my advice to anyone for this season as you're preparing for 2021. That's truly a word for 2020. <laughs> and people need to get in alignment and get ready for 2021. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, wonderful woman of God, um, just a wonderful sister. I'm so blessed that you decided and, and found it not robbery to be here on today, blessing the listeners this Tuesday. Um, just know that um, it's just a, been an amazing ride to watch your journey. Um, the little time that I did get to know you on living out there in Pennsylvania, I watched you, and I, and I tell you, you, you went by, and you, God just took you by storm through stuff, and you handled every bit of it. And I know it was challenging, most of it, you know, because it just felt like it was just coming at you, boom, 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 you know what I'm saying? But you, you stood right there, in that, in, in, and you let them use you, and, um, and you're still doing it. You know, and the fact that you're giving back to your community, bless you, bless you for that. But I know these wonderful listeners want to know how they can reach out to you. Give them information where they can reach out to you, emails, whatever. <laughs> I feel like the one-stop shop is theloveafter.com. Theloveafter.com has on all social media um you know, if you go on there, it will link you straight to acting, my acting tab, um, author tab, everything you want me to send you a book directly from me, autograph with a, you know, the gift bag and a note in there, inspirational note. You can get that directly from me on theloveafter.com. Um, at the Love After on all social media, I do check my inboxes. Um, or you can order the book on Amazon if you're a person like me who it's hard for you to sit still and, and read books because you're always on the go. I'm an Audible girl, so you can listen mm-hmm. to me on Audible. Oh, um, if you're Barnes & Noble, you can listen, read it on Barnes & Noble, Kindle. So, yeah. Look at God. Look at God. And he will use you if you allow. If you open, just get a little relationship with him. The Seed that must it be and have that much faith, you know, he can do all things but fail. And he truly has not failed you, sister. You, I want to grow up to be like you. <laughs> you are amazing. <laughs> I'm telling you, God bless you. God bless you. Um, and, and, again, as a wonderful mother and a woman of God and setting the tone for women. And that's what this this season is all about. I just feel like it's a season of strong, mighty women, um, especially in God. And and you're raising up a standard for your daughter to to see your walk, um, your kids to see your walk, and and just keep doing it, my sister. Honestly, I'm I'm just so proud of you. Uh, I, it just I can't even say no more. It's just you are amazing. Um, and you walk. You don't just talk about it, but you walk the walk and that's everything in today's world you have to be about god's business not just talk it but be about yeah. it and i see it in everything that you do amen amen um i'm definitely not going to close without you closing us out in prayer so i would just Absolutely. leave this time for you to take us to the throne my sister thank you um lord god father god in the name of jesus holy spirit infinite spirit lord i thank you for Ms. Paula, I thank you for this platform that you have blessed her with. I thank you for anyone under the sound of my voice right now, Lord God, that's listening, Lord God, that's in a season of why me, that's in a season of why, what's my next, what's, what's, what's next for me? I don't know which direction to go. Mm. I feel like I'm over the place. I feel stuck. I feel stagnant. I feel broken. I feel hurt. I yeah. feel abused. Yeah. I feel abused. I feel misled. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you get in the heart and the mind of those individuals right now, Lord God, who is seeking you or probably wanting to seek you but just don't know how, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that you give them a place of comfort, Lord God. Give them peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord God, help them to fall in love with you like never before, Lord God. Lord God, help them, God, to um, to seek you for every 
way, shape, or form, Lord God, to be transformed by the renewing of their mind, Lord God, to change their yes, perception Jesus. on how they look at life, how they look at hurt, how they view pain, how they view failure, to help them to fail forward, Lord God, to, to pick themselves up, Lord God, to dust themselves off and to persevere, Lord God. As long as they yes. still have life and breath in their body, Lord God, that is yes. your way of letting us have your way with us, Lord God. Mm-hmm. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you give them strength, Lord God, that mm-hmm. you give them faith, empower them, Lord God. Mm-hmm. Give them the strength that they need, Lord God, the tenacity to keep pushing, to keep persevering, to keep pressing forward, Lord God. Lord God, we don't yes. always know the who, what, when, where, why, how, Lord God. But, Lord God, all you need from us is just a yes. Just a yes, Lord, just a yes yes. Lord God. Just a yes, yes, Lord God. So I pray right now, yes. Lord God, that you give them a spirit of obedience, Lord God, to yes. say yes to your will, yes to your way, Lord yes. God. Yes. To the plans that you have for their life, Lord God. Yes. Lord God, according to Jeremiah 29 and 11, it says the plan that you have for us is to prosper us and not to harm us, but to give us hope in the future, Lord God. Lord God, so we seek you right now, Lord, because your will is, thy will be done, Lord God. Lord God, help us to have a a heavenly experience on our earth, Lord God. You said, as it is in earth, you know, give us this day, Lord God, our daily bread, Lord God. So, Father God, help us to have a heaven experience, Lord God, an open heaven experience, Lord God, that you have poured down blessings, Lord God, where we don't even have room enough to receive, Lord God. I pray for a refill and an overflow, Lord God. I pray for like abundance, Lord God, in this season, Lord God, as we're getting ready to close our 2020, Lord God, the year of 2020 vision, Lord God, where you yes. are making things plain, Lord God, where, Lord God, yes. where if only we humble ourselves and seek you, Lord God, this is the year yes. of manifesting and, and discovering yes. your purpose. This is the year of discovering your gift. This is the yes. year to yes. take it up notch, Lord God, to do things even in a, in, in, a, in a more powerful way. This is the year of evolution, Lord God, to being a better version of ourselves, Lord God, where a lot of things are being revealed this year, Lord God. So, Lord, I pray that we take this time to get more in alignment with you, in alignment with your word, alignment with your plan, Lord God, and give us the strength, Lord God, to stand on your promises. You said in your word that your, your answer to our promises is yes and amen, Lord God. So, Lord God, help us and give us the faith to trust you like never before, to stand on your promises, that it doesn't yeah. matter what it looks feels like, that we'll stand on your word, we'll stand on your promises, Lord God, that we go back to the vision board, whatever it is that you told us five years ago, ten years ago, five months ago, Lord God, that we allow yeah. it to, to lie dormant out of the spirit of fear, out of yeah. the spirit of confusion, or the feeling of inadequacy, Lord God, we bind that up right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Pray like right now, God, that yokes are broken, Lord God, that chains are being released off of our mind. Chains are being released yes. off of our heart, God. Lord God, yes. we're praying for a renewed mind, a renewed heart, a renewed spirit like God. Yes. Lord God, love like never before, like Lord God. We'll have wisdom like like never before, Lord yes. God. We'll have a the spirit of discernment yes. like never before, Lord God. Yes. Lord God, we're praying for a better version of ourselves, yes. Lord God, and to be alignment with you, more in alignment with your way, your will, and your purpose for our life, yeah. Lord God. I just want to say happy birthday to everyone who is listening to this call because this is your birthday. This is the year that you're stepping out and you're going to celebrate life ever before. Yeah. This is the moment yeah. that you're just going to hang on to it and grab on to it, grab hold of it like a strong yeah. grip like never before and celebrate you, get into you, celebrate you, celebrate your purpose, and go back to the drawing board and see what do you need to do to make tomorrow your best day ever. So, Father God, I thank you for the new beginnings. I thank you for the things that are being broken, the shifts that are happening, the things that we're going to be healing from, Lord God, the things that are going to rise to the surface, not to scare us, but the things that are going to rise to the surface that we need to heal from in order to embrace embrace our better tomorrow, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for everything that you have done, everything that you're about to do, and everything that you are doing in our life. As we tell you many thanks in your wonderful and most precious name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Mighty woman of God. (laughs) You are amazing. What a prayer. What a prayer. Oh, thank you so much again for blessing the listeners. Listeners, you have truly just been blessed. 
take that, go with that into 2021 and do what God would have you to do and rise up. That's basically what it's about, rising up and being the best you you can be. And we've Mm -hmm. truly been blessed by this woman of God that have been through, but she's here to tell you her testimony and she's walking in it. (laughs) So God bless you. God bless you so much. Just just for being here. I mean, again, I, I just can't say it enough. God continue to bless you and keep you for a time such as this. We need you. We need your voice. Keep doing what God has called you to do because you're blessing folks. Uh, thank you so much. And give your kids love for me. Um, oh, I just want to, again, thank the listeners just for being on today, uh, listening to this wonderful woman of God. You got to get her stuff, get to that website, get to that information so that you can just be blessed over and over and over again by this wonderful woman. Uh, Jerry, I just want to thank my tech man in the back. You know, Jerry, thank you. Jerry Royce is in the house. Positive Power 21 is always supporting me, and I just bless God. Thank you. Thank you for another wonderful, anointed, uplifting Tuesday with the testimony. God bless. God bless you.